Hey, aloha, and welcome to my Aloha Friday. Stan, the energy man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, we have a great guest today that I've been looking forward to having on the show for a long time. I'm really excited about what he's got going on the mainland and what he'd like to do here in Hawaii. But before we get started with our guest, I want to just uh, throw out some thanks to the folks who put together the city's sustainability uh, get-together at the Blaisdell yesterday, to Mayor Caldwell and all the folks that uh, put that together. It was a great event, and I hope it uh, turns into a good thing for our island here on Oahu to get us clean and green and sustainable. But today our guest is uh, Trevor Milton from Nicola Motor Company. And uh, I saw a press release and a video probably a few months ago and I just got so jazzed. Um, in the meantime, I went on his website and looked at what he's building, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, is um, big trucks, big, big trucks where hydrogen makes a lot of sense. So Trevor, welcome to the show. I'm so glad to have you on. I thank you, could thank you for joining us on Skype. I wish you were here in person, but uh, maybe we'll get you out here in person too, so a little bit later. Yeah, for sure, thanks for having me, and it'd be a lot of fun to be there in person as well next time, for sure. Yeah. And yeah, I know the weather's nice over there too, but it's better here. But um, start off, let's let's uh, hear a little bit about how you got started with this this pretty ambitious dream, and and what background you have to kind of make this all come about. Yeah, so uh, primarily, pretty much Nikola Motor Company, we design and build electric uh, semi trucks. So this would be Class Eight heavy duty semi trucks. Ever since I was a kid, my dad used to run and manage the Union Pacific Railroad uh, in Las Vegas, Nevada. And so I grew up driving locomotives and always wanted to build a locomotive semi truck. So ever since I was about eight, uh, six, seven, eight years old, I had the chance to be able to be in locomotives and see the power and performance of electric, um, electric uh, motors. And I knew that uh, at that time, that was kind of my dream. And so it took a long time, took about, you know, 30 years or 25 years to to get to the point where we had that I had enough resources, enough uh, um, experience, enough background, and technology had advanced enough for us to be able to build a, a fully electric zero emission uh, semi truck that was not limited by range uh, like battery only is. So, so give us an idea of you know your system, the, the vehicle itself, because I understand it carries around 100 kilograms of hydrogen has a range of about 1,200 miles. So give us those kind of statistics and tell us what's unique about your tractor trailer rig that's um, different than even a diesel rig performance wise, comfort wise, driving wise. Yeah, across the board, I mean, it's it's better in every category. This is the first time in history electric vehicles have actually been able to surpass a, a diesel in every category. So when I say every category, that means cost, emissions, price, and features. Every one of those, those are, uh, uh, that's the cost to drive, I mean, the cost of doing business and also the price of the truck. So across the board now, the electric drivetrain with hydrogen allows you to be more cost competitive than a diesel uh, diesel vehicle. And most importantly to us, obviously, is getting rid of all the pollutants and the emissions associated with diesel trucks as they're the worst, um, they're the wor they, they essentially create more problems in the atmosphere and for the health than, than all the cars out there. I mean, the diesel trucks are the worst. Right. So what we did is we, uh, uh, this truck primarily has um, has a pretty big battery bank on it, but it's not like what you would see with a Tesla, like a Tesla car, the Tesla truck that Elon's talking about. This is uh, about 240 to 300 kilowatt hours of lithium, so it's about two to three times the size of a Tesla car for the battery. But then it has a very large hydrogen fuel cell um, range extender on board. That hydrogen allows your truck to go from about 200 miles, which is battery only, up to about 800 to 1200 miles, depending on the terrain. So you can drive zero emission, more horsepower, more torque, nearly silent, um, and go for uh, more miles than a diesel can go for without stopping. So 800 to 1200 miles without any emissions, which is obviously was our was our goal. And and I know that the the actual cab design is, and, and I have an aviation background, so. And I looked at your cab design. It looks more like an aircraft cockpit than a than a regular truck. Yeah, it's all about a panoramic view for the driver. Um, you know, driver turnover rate in America is the number one problem in trucking right now. They cannot keep drivers. Um, so what we did is we came in and we decided we were going to build a truck that was not only gorgeous looking, but had an interior cab of thirty percent bigger than any other diesel, while still maintaining the same height and width dimensions that are regulatory. So now inside the Nikola One truck, 
you can actually look inside of there and you got panoramic views all the way around you from essentially 180 degrees from your left to your right and allows you to see the road. You got better visibility of the road and the sky than any other diesel. And it looks very similar to a bullet train from the outside, but it looks like an airplane cockpit from the inside. So it's very, very uh, uh, similar to what you were just saying. And then you also augment it with some cameras on the outside as well and some sensors, correct? We do. It'll come out of the factory full level for autonomy. It'll be the only truck ever built in history with coming out of the factory ready for autonomy control. So this will be, you'll have uh, more than a dozen cameras all the way around it, high definition cameras, and more than a dozen radar and LIDAR all the way around as well. So that'll help you see in, in bad weather. It can help you stop your truck. It can lane assist. It can prevent you from departing your lane, and it can actually uh, uh, be fully autonomously driven as well. So that'll come straight out of the factory. So that would, that would appeal not just to the drivers, but to the vehicles around the drivers. I was driving from Las Vegas to Phoenix uh, not last year sometime, and it was pretty early in the morning. It was about 4.30 in the morning. I was trying to get there before a meeting, and I, I had a flatbed trailer almost roll his back wheels over me trying to change lanes, and he just never looked. And your, your system would, would stop any of that stuff from happening. So it's actually improving the safety all around for the people around your trucks and um, and the drivers themselves. Yeah, safety was a big aspect of our truck. I mean, with our with our electric motors on every wheel, much like a locomotive, we can stop faster than a diesel. And we can also prevent the truck from moving if there's a car in the way. And with the camera and radar and LIDAR systems, you can do that. And right now, if a driver doesn't see it, he'll just either run you over or run you off the road, or you'll have to hit your brakes because uh, you know you went through that. That was your experience. Yeah. I had the I, I just missed his back tires and. I had the back of his trailer go over my hood because I slammed on the brakes so hard. Um, so fortunate for me, they, they, I just I tapped them a couple of times hard and it didn't lock up. But uh, I'm, I'm there with you. And also, your cab also has a lot of great um, comfort features for, you know, these drivers are on the road a long time. They got to rest up and eat and things like that. So what are the things in the rest of the cab behind the driver? Yeah, you've got it. It's the only truck coming out on the market with a full-size uh, commercial, like, um, residential refrigerator and microwave. So the number one cost to drivers right now, besides fuel, is their food. So they've all asked for larger fridges, and in the other trucks, there's just no room with diesels. So we are able to give them a full-size 12-cubic refrigerator and, and microwave and freezer, and that allows them to take food on the road for up to one to two weeks and not have to, not have to buy expensive uh, food on the road. So that's one advantage. And then... Um, Obviously, the most important thing when you think about the, um, the interior comfort of a truck is the, is the sleeping situations. And our bed is a full-size bed. It's 12 inches wider than any other production bed on the market. So it's all about driver comfort, the ability to, to recruit drivers to drive. And once they drive our truck, they'll never be able to go back to a diesel. Yeah, we didn't bring any graphics or anything uh, on this end, but um, I know folks can go to your website. In fact, if you just Google Nicola One, um, you can find the, uh, the, a lot of the um, material that you folks have out for advertising and, and uh, videos and things like that for folks to look at it. But it is a beautiful truck, uh, performs really well, and it's a real truck. It's not, it's not some um, facade you know, thing you push around with a, a forklift or something. It's a real truck that people have climbed inside and it moves around. So um, you, you've got the real thing and it looks great and has great performance and great potential. And like you say, everything that you're looking for from price to safety, uh, it's, it's there. And it's, it looks like it's, it's well worth companies taking seriously to, to integrate into their businesses, particularly over there on the continental U.S. where long haul trucking is um, such a, a huge part of our, uh, our nation's infrastructure. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's all about price to the bottom line and the, and the fact that it's zero emissions. I mean, when a company goes to buy a truck, they care about two things. What kind of impact is it going to have on the environment? And also, what's the cost? Because they can't increase their cost and help the environment because it would put them out of business. So that's why this truck is so exciting because these companies can come into a zero emission truck and still cut their cost by 25 to 30% compared to a diesel every month. So that's those savings are absolutely massive in the industry. They've never been seem that big before. So this is a pretty big, a, a really fun thing to, to see happen. Yeah, especially for fleets that are changing now because now you have tier four emission controls on diesels. That's gonna drive the price up uh, even on your hardware. Um, and again, it, you're just band-aiding the pollution piece. 
So, yep. you know, you got the great process there. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about the infrastructure that goes along with your trucks? Here in Hawaii, uh, we actually have a direct connect to Toyota Japan, and the local Toyota dealers actually have some Mirais on island, but they had to build their own station. Cause we, so we call it bringing the chicken and the egg. Um, you yep. guys are doing something similar with your system, correct? Yeah, so what we do is we actually come in and provide the hydrogen station. And when someone buys their truck, they pay nothing for fuel. They have hydrogen for a full million miles. So their overall cost per month when everything is factored in is about 25 to 30% savings compared to a diesel. And we provide the hydrogen station. So for instance, uh, um, I, have, I think you guys are out in Oahu. My, my father has a house in Maui. So if we came over to Hawaii, what we would do is we put, end up putting a hydrogen station on all the main um, islands out there and allow the trucks to actually fill up there and then they can deliver goods all over the island and not create any pollution whatsoever. And that's the, that's the great thing about hydrogen is we can use all the excess energy at nighttime from like wind and, and solar uh, throughout the day and, uh, and other forms. And we can create the hydrogen and all it is is just electricity and water creating hydrogen. So there's no byproduct. It, it's an indefinite use of energy that never goes away as long as you have sunlight to create the, the, you know, the uh, sun or wind to create the energy. So was I dreaming, or was that an offer to put our first station in over here? It's uh, it, it, what we're gonna do is it's all based upon the trucks that we have uh, on order. So you betcha, you, once we come into the uh, the you know the islands of Hawaii over there, we're going to uh, we'll be putting in stations at, at most of the the main uh, Hawaii islands, which we're really excited about. Okay, so I guess I better drum up some business for you, and I can I, as a state employee, I can do that and not charge you anything. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll do that and try and get some of those truck drivers uh, and those owners getting these uh, vehicles on the road out here. Because as you know, Hawaii is very environmentally conscious. We have a high dependence on fossil fuel now, and we haven't yep. done as much as we should on the transportation side to reduce our footprint, our fossil fuel footprint. So this would be a great uh, step forward for us. You know, fleet vehicles yeah. are the way to really make a big impact, and um, commercial fleet vehicles would be awesome. Yeah, even high, even power production. I mean, the fact that we have uh, hydrogen is one of the best ways to store energy because it's uh, it has no life cycle to it, so you can store it forever indefinitely. So a lot of the hotels and stuff, we've actually had some of them uh, call out, and reach out, and ask us about could you get our hotel 100% off the grid to be zero emission? And that way, if a storm blew in and blew down the power lines, it wouldn't matter. They're still off grid. They're running off of zero emission hydrogen power, and it's really incredible. We're not trying to. We're not trying to affect the power companies. We're just trying to bring zero emission energy to people that want it. You're starting to sound just like me. We actually took delivery of two uh, hydrogen fuel cell light carts from GTM Lux for yesterday. And the state's going to own them, and we're going to actually put them out there during events and things and let people see um, hydrogen power at work, quiet, clean, only water coming out the exhaust to produce uh, exterior lighting for events and we have two generators coming in from gtm as well probably in about another month and the gem vehicle we drove over here in the little little polaris electric vehicle we have some students converting that putting in a fuel uh, a range extender with a fuel cell uh yep. this summer next month that's cool yeah so so what is the leasing kind of model that you're looking at pretty much what we do is we charge a per mile rate so it's about um it can range. We're working on those pricing right now, but it'll be about 30% less than a diesel per mile to operate. So what we're trying to do is build up a model where people can just pay per pay per mile that they drive the truck. And that way they're not worried about lease payments every month. It's just however many miles they drive, they pay for it. And there's a certain minimum that they have to hit, but other than that, um, it's about 80,000 miles a year. So as long as they hit those numbers and they're driving the truck, uh, you know, sometimes, that they'll be able to meet their, meet their minimums and they're only paying for the miles that they use. And it's a really great um, uh, uh, business plan about how we provide it for the drivers and also for us. Uh, we're able to, we're able to uh, get customers into a long-term agreement with us for uh, once they're with us, they'll never want to leave. So it's all about giving these really, there's really nice equipment that would normally cost a lot more money at a reduced price below diesels. And that's our, that's our goal. That's awesome. Well, we're going to take a quick break here, and we'll be back in 60 seconds to spend some more time with Trevor and get a little bit more into detail on how his, his system works and how it may, might apply here in Hawaii. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff. MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. 
We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to my lunch hour. Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man here, coming to you from beautiful downtown Honolulu with uh, Trevor Milton from Nicola Motor Company. And we're talking about a really exciting uh, upcoming uh, business that he's got started and uh, maybe what it means to Hawaii. So Trevor, um, you know, on the big island of Hawaii, we actually have big trucks moving freight and stuff over a big island. I mean, we call it the big island because it's a big island. Um, and it, it's a great opportunity, I think, for a model like yours. When you talk about roughly an 80,000 mile minimum, I, I think they could actually do that over there. We're here on Oahu, that, that might be a little sketchy. I think the big island, they could actually probably pull something like that off. So. Um, uh, do you have other partners? I mean, you know, this is a big endeavor when you talk about building stations and building trucks. You know, what's your model look like um, that, that really gives you confidence you're going you're gonna to make all this happen? Yeah, I mean, really, it's, uh, it's, um, we've got probably the best partners in the world. We have a partner called Meritor. They're the number one suspension and differential manufacturer in the, in the industry for heavy-duty trucking. We have a partner called Ryder, which handles all of our sales, service, and warranty. And then we have a lot of other partners, you know, enormous, uh, enormously talented partners that do software controls, vehicle controls, manufacturing, fabrication, and, and all the design work. So we have a big team here, but we also have a big team of partners that help us pull it off. And the great thing about Hawaii is, is that you have, you're already paying higher than higher premium prices on fuel than the mainland. So even if someone is driving a slightly less amount of miles, what we do is we'd probably have a different, slightly different increased price per mile out there in Hawaii. It would still be 20 to 30 percent less than a diesel, but it'd be slightly higher than the mainland. And so that way, you know, you may not be able to hit 80,000 miles in Oahu, but if someone hits 50, 60,000 miles, it can still make sense because you're already paying high premiums on diesel fuel. That's, so that's, that's kind of the advantage. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, we, we're kind of used to that kind of uh, adjustment out here anyway. So wh where do you plan to have your, your major factory doing the constructing the vehicles? Did you pick a location? Do you have the factory growing up yet? We, we do have a location uh, picked. It'll become, we'll be announcing that in about three to three to five weeks from now. It's a big announcement. Um, it's, uh, for the meantime, we have a partner called Fitzgerald. They're out of uh, Tennessee, and they build about 6,000 Peterbilt uh, glider trucks a year. And this family has uh, been uh, in the truck assembly business for a long, long time, and they're going to help us build our first 5,000 trucks, and that will help us make sure that we can – avoid the capital expenditure that's needed right up front to build a factory mm -hmm. and be able to build the first 5,000 trucks and, and uh, really, uh, really help out the people that are, uh, um, you know, get these trucks in people's hands without having to wait 10 years to get them. So are you, you feeling pretty confident? You got a, a pretty good list of people that are interested and, and ready to step up? Yeah. Yeah. We've already done over, uh, we did over $4 billion in pre-orders for our truck the first month and we're, uh, we're close to passing uh, right now over $8 billion. So, I mean, our company is just is growing like crazy, and I think within probably five, you know, three to five years of order backlogs will be as big as any other uh, OEM out there in the world. So, we've got orders coming in that these other guys could only dream of right now. Great. Well, we can, uh, you know, we'll definitely reach out to the, the industry here and help you out because uh, Hawaii really wants to get moving in hydrogen. In fact, back in 2006 to 2008, the state had a major effort to... Uh, move into a hydrogen economy and it's kind of languished and, and kind of fallen off most people's radar except for mine of course and um, I think it, there's a lot of people out here though they're really excited about hydrogen as a energy storage and transportation fuel and, uh, yep. and we're trying to get people fired up because there's so much renewables out here as you mentioned this energy storage it's perfect um, there's a certain point where batteries just don't make sense and, and we can uh, take all the excess energy off the grid I mean that's the advantage that we have that no one else has is Whenever the grid's got excess energy, um, we can take it all from them. And that's a, a feature no other company can do. So batteries are a bad idea when it comes to trying to store energy because they have such a short life cycle. Our hydrogen lasts over 20 years, 
So your life cycle is not every three, four, five years. It's it's 20 years. And we're, we're not just balancing a grid. We're actually taking all the excess energy. So that grid can be really happy uh, knowing that we're like this massive 30 to 50 megawatt buffer that can just take anything that they want to throw at us at any time throughout the 24 hours of the day. Yeah, we're trying to convince our local utility that that's, that's a great uh, reason to look at hydrogen. They're, uh, they are looking. Um, we're, we're hoping they get more excited, at least a little bit more excited than they are right well, now. We'll but sit we down and talk with them because now that we can bring the truck and the hydrogen station, it's not just about building an expensive hydrogen station. We actually are the ones paying for it. So that's a, the, the truck's did a really incredible uh, program, and I, I wanted to, um, I want everyone to know about that. They can go to NikolaMotor.com in order to see that. That's uh, just singular, NikolaMotor.com. But we also have another product that's called the Nikola Zero, which is a, uh, which is a, uh, a lot of people are familiar with the Polaris Razor, which is like a four-seater uh, utility vehicle. Mm -hmm. we've, we've got an electric UTV that is absolutely incredible. It's a, it's a four-seater, and it goes uh, one to 200 miles on a charge, and it's got over 500 horsepower and 500 foot-pounds of torque. Whoa. So you're talking the ability, like it's got more power than a Ford F-150. You can tour, you can tow more, but it's also completely zero emission and all electric, and you can drive it around the island. So we're going to try to get some of these built real fast and get them over there in the in the mayors and the and the and the you know did the hands of the different uh, the mayors to see if they can help us get these permitted for the cities because rather than all these Mustangs being rented out by the car companies, why not have these electric uh, UTVs rented out? that have the ability to be driven anywhere zero emission and that's really our goal is to try to get all the emissions off the islands and you can't do it unless you're unless you're creative and um, you know and, and are willing to uh, uh, permit vehicles that normally wouldn't be permitted on the road. Right I was going to say most of the time those vehicles are limited to low speed vehicle class which is 35 mile an hour zones and and have a governor on them that keeps them down yep. below 35. Yeah so that's what we're trying to change we're trying to go into these uh, these mayors and say hey look we can get rid of the emissions. We have this UTV that's just like a car. It has stability. It has analog braking system. It has stability control. It has full autonomy control. It's safer than a car, with the exception of like the crash. Uh, you know, all the crash testing you have to do, which runs hundreds of millions of dollars. And we're not going to spend that on a on a uh, an inexpensive uh, vehicle. So well, our goal is to try to get the island off of emissions. If you go to Lake Havasu, Arizona, their entire city is run on UTVs now, and they have less wrecks on UTVs than they had in cars. So the key about this is, is it's it's all about getting rid of the emissions, and we can do that with this little electric uh, UTV that doesn't need to be charged every day. You can drive it two, you know, two hundred miles without having one to two hundred miles without having to charge it. And this would be the four passenger version. Yep, and you can have windshields on it. You can have everything. So if it's raining, you can you know you have windshields. You can have doors. All that is, it's a really amazing uh, uh, little unit. You can see it on NikolaMotor.com uh, as well. Okay. Do you have an estimated price on that yet? It's going to range anywhere from about thirty to forty-five thousand dollars, so pretty inexpensive. Uh, um, it's a, uh, it's got a stereo system built in. It's got it's all waterproof. It's uh, mud proof. You can spray it with a pressure washer. It's got full touch screens in it, so it's pretty much like driving a hundred eighty thousand dollar Tesla, or you know, for for essentially thirty-five or forty thousand bucks. Okay. All right, that'd be fun. I'd like to check that it out. It's fun. I, I mean, the road to Hana on one of these things. I'm bringing mine over soon, and uh, hopefully, I don't get in too much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> are you Are you going to be on the island sometime soon? We're going to hopefully get out there at, near the end of this year. So when I do, I will let you know um, before the end of this year, and we're going to bring it over, and we're going to try to shoot some video on the road to Hana. Perfect. So our now, obviously, that's Maui because that's where we have our house. Not that we don't love Oahu and the Big Islands and the others. It's just I have a personal tie to Maui. So in a house there in Haiku, so we'd love to, we'd love to have you over there and actually be able to take that road with us to the road to Hana with us. Great. Well, if we can talk Mayor Caldwell and let me drive one around Honolulu, I might buy one of your things just to drive around here. Well, let's get them on because once they realize that these are safer and better and and, and more fun and, and more environmental friendly than the gasoline versions, there's no reason to have those gasoline cars on the island anymore. Got it. But I can't afford a Tesla, so I need something that's a little more my speed. Yeah. Yeah, and it's more economical. I mean, it's only, I mean, that's a pretty inexpensive unit. You know, if you think about the fact it has 107 kilowatt hours of lithium, so that's bigger. It's got more power in it, energy density, than the $160,000 or $80,000 Tesla has, and you're buying it for one quarter of the price. Exactly. Like, we built some, we built some class, I believe it's class six size vehicles, F 550 and a little bit bigger in our shop for the Air Force. And we normally only have, 
less than 30 kilowatt hours worth of lithium batteries on our vehicle. So that's a pretty good hunk of batteries for a. a, a These are awesome. And the thing has got 20 inches of suspension travel. It's got four wheel drive. It's got a, a G, uh, essentially a GL audio system built into it, all waterproof. I mean, this thing is the funnest thing you've ever driven in your life. And once you go to one, you won't even want to get in your car anymore because they're so fun to drive. You just can't ever get an experience like that ever again. It sounds like a Humvee, uh, electric Humvee. Much, yeah, like a miniature Humvee electric Humvee. It's very, it's a small unit. I mean, it's a four seater and it's a, it's a utility vehicle. So you can go to NikolaMotor.com and look at it. And it's, we got a new version coming out in two months that we've spent the last year and a year and a half working on. We'll be announcing all the new pictures and renderings and drawings and the, and the full real life version here in the next uh, two months for the public to see it actually in, uh, operating in real world scenarios. And when will they be available to purchase? Um, we're taking pre-orders right now. So you can go on anikolamotor.com and actually pre-order them for 750 bucks. And that'll be applied towards your purchase price or it can be refunded. There's no uh, no limitation on it. We don't even spend the money. It just sits there in an account. We don't touch it. And uh, you, can, uh, um, you can go on there right now and reserve it so you don't have to wait years to get it once we come out. Um, sometime next year, we'll have them available for the public. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to do that. In fact, as soon as I get back from this gig, I'm, I'm going to go check your website and maybe put some money down on one of those. That sounds like fun. They're they're one of the, they're, they're an incredible machine, and you can tow with them too. It's just crazy what you can do. It's uh, like nothing you've ever experienced. So that's the greatest thing about Nikola Motor Company is we've got hundreds of millions of dollars in development on the on the semi truck, and then we're able to take that money and put it into the UTV. Because if we, if we didn't have all that development into the semi-truck, there's no way we could ever afford to develop a utility vehicle like that because you would never make your money back. So that's the advantage we have here at Nikola is the ability to uh, take all that technology and bring it over to the, util the UTV. Great. Well, I'll tell you what, we got about 30 seconds left, and I'd like to leave it all up to you to just tell us what you'd like to tell us as we close out here today. I think that, you know, we all have a responsibility in this life uh, to not just leave this place better than the way that we found it, but also in, a, in an economical uh, situation better than we found it. And a lot of people don't correlate the two. They think that, you know, it's all about just the environment. It's, it's, it's not just about the environment, but we need money in order to develop things like this. So the great thing about this technology in this company is, is that we're saving people money and we're eliminating all the emissions. So the first time in history, we're able to do both and leave this planet and this place a better place for our kids, not just environmentally, but economically as well. And that's a lifelong dream of mine we've been able to start to begin to realize. Great. Well, thanks, Trevor. I really appreciate you being on today. And obviously, we're going to have to have you back when we can do some more stuff when you come over to visit Maui. So we're looking forward Thank to you. that. Sure. Aloha, and thanks so much. We'll do the next show live uh, here from Honolulu. Maybe we'll do it from Maui. Maybe I'll go over there and we'll both Skype it in from there. Sounds good. It sounds like a lot of fun. Okay, Trevor. Thanks again. And thanks, uh, guys. until Take we care. see you again uh, later this year, aloha. And thanks Aloha. for joining us with Stan the Energy Man this week. We'll see you next Friday. Aloha.